Brittany Henry. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this song um, is called The Lord Hears. And um, I was really inspired by this and thought it was something that people needed to hear. And I felt the Lord speaking to me saying, I hear you over the course of this week when I was praying. And um, I remember praying in the sanctuary and it was just a time of prayer, nothing like special. And there was an older woman who came in and I, I really didn't have anything to say. I was just laying on my face. And the, the older woman, she said, you cares for your people, God. And I don't know if it was that she put an S on the end of cares <laughs> that really spoke to me, but it was something like she just looked like she was going through and she had a lot of need. And in all of that, she could say, Lord, you cares for your people. And it just reminded me that the Lord is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. And then I was reading and it was like the righteous man has many troubles. And we think that because we follow the Lord, that we're not going to have problems, that our car doesn't break down, that sometimes the money doesn't come in the way that we like, but we have trials and tribulations, and that's normal. As a righteous man, you will have many troubles, but the Lord will deliver you from them all. And so I just wanted to remind you of that, and that's where this song came from. Um, this next song I'm going to sing for you uh, is something that I wrote recently, and I just feel like the Lord has been showing me new things and just giving me a new voice. And it says, um, I'm, comforted it, I'm comforted by this, that you hear me and that you come to my defense. And I remember I told you that I felt like the Lord was saying, I hear you. 
and I was really comforted by that. Um, so I hope this song blesses you and encourages your heart. I'm going to sing a little bit for you. <clears throat> my song. I was truly comforted by that. Um, it says, my life is hidden in you, and to you I sacrifice with shouts of joy. And that's straight from the Psalms. And I, I think about what it means to sacrifice, and how our praise, and how our worship can be a sacrifice. Um, entering into the presence of the Lord, sometimes uh, you know, you may be distracted, and it takes time. I, I think that's something that people don't realize is you may be quickly and easily discouraged when you first um, start praying, but you have to give yourself time to uh, stop being distracted by your life and whatever troubles it is that you're going through, and that really labor and prayer on the altar. And I can only speak to you about what my experience has been, and this has been a trying time for me, and the only way that I get through it is by spending time on the altar with God. And um, 
you can't get discouraged. I just stay down there. You know, if you're still upset, stay on down there. Stay and just keep praying until the Lord and the presence of the Lord enters in. Um, and it says, I will sing and make music to the Lord. Um, I don't know if you're if you've been also an artist or maybe you like to write music um, and maybe you like to sing worship. And one of the biggest struggles for me, and I can only give you my testimony um, in this season, has been the criticisms of other people and needing to uh, to pray for the Lord to help me and say, in the name of Jesus, I don't care what anybody else thinks. You know, and it's so hard because if you're trying to do righteously and people may be saying that, you know, that person's only doing it for this, this person's only doing it for that, but you have to do what the Lord called you to do and know that you are walking uprightly before God and take no care for what anybody else says. And that's kind of um, when I was reading this song where I was comforted is that he said, the artist said that um, one thing had I desired of the Lord and that one thing will I seek um, and to dwell in his house and to inquire in his temple. And there's nothing greater. And you think about Mary and Martha and the one that chose the greater thing was the one who chose to sit at the feet of Jesus. And so I love the presence of the Lord. And even when things are hard, I know that I can get through it. If I can enter into God's presence and sit in the presence of the Lord, I love to sit at his feet. And, um, and the song says, I will sing and make music to the Lord. And I was encouraged that that's exactly what I'm supposed to be doing is singing and making music to the Lord and I write my songs and that's what the Lord's given me and that's what I've always done and so if um, you're coming up against a lot of opposition and it's so crazy when you receive persecution um, verbal persecution seemingly from other believers um, saying you know you're not supposed to be doing what you're doing or whatever it is like that but if I just want to encourage you that if the Lord's put a song on your heart that it's okay you don't have to be getting up and doing all the working it's okay to sit at the feet of Jesus that you chose the greater thing you know write your songs and sing your music to the Lord um, and that has been the biggest comfort and encouragement for me and I'm just gonna uh, pray with you if that's something that you're going through. Uh, Lord, I thank you so much for this day and I thank you for everyone who will hear the songs that uh, you've given me and I pray, Lord, that you would just stretch out your hand over their mind, Lord, that you yourself would fight against those who fight against them, Lord, that you would find them in their secret place and that you would encourage them, Lord, that you would let them know that you hear them when they call. You are a good shepherd. You lay down your life for the sheep. God, you said that anything we ask in your name, that the Father would be glorified, that would you do. And Lord, we just pray right now for everyone, God, who's listening, that they would be encouraged to pray and to seek your face and to sit at your feet and to stay down there and to wait for your presence, God. We ask that you would do those things that they ask of you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. My name is Brittany Henry, and these are the songs that the Lord gave me. I hope that they bless your heart. You are so
Keziah, and this is Hope. The Reverend Jesse Duplantis said that pain is inevitable, but misery is an option. Now when the rain is incredible and shows no signs of stopping and the main things you've held on to are slipping close to dropping, are you watching? Far off in the distance, plotting his assistance, inching closer and closer to our problems with persistence, it's hope. Just hope? Yes. Hope. Funny how such a short word can lengthen the strength of a rope. The same one we wrapped around our sanity and attempted to choke the life out of. Just to function day after day. We pray and pray away darkness in hopes that God will shine his light now cause sinking is for ships. Not for those of us who are equipped with the same power that raised Jesus Christ. Now what? Hope. Take joy in it. Bind up your soul with it. Ignore your doubts. Control your fears. Clog up your ears with it. So much so that when anybody, the enemy included, tries to dissent your cheer, you ain't hearing it. Hope brings a peace that makes no sense. Human understanding just can't comprehend. Why is she so calm and she can't pay the rent? Hope is the groundwork of faith, therefore worry is unspent. The Lord himself takes pleasure in those that hope. Blessed are we considered when we continue to cope, aware that our despair is merely temporary, interim, until it is into our troubles the Lord enters in, making mountains of our valleys, plain paths of our alleys, dressing wounds from the battle and adding another victory to the tally. It is a benefit to the believer to be well girded in hope, surrounded and grounded with no fear of slopes, for it is in us. A non-believer may catch a glimpse of the way, see the fire within, and inquire of them how. While it is night, do you see day? May the testimony of our hope supersede our own humanity. Break up fallow ground that has settled down and not give way to vanity. May we effectively communicate the glory of hope with our voice and in the same breath convey the glory and hope in our source. next poem is called uh, Forgiveness. I should have written this a long time ago, but I'm a firm believer in only speaking about what I know, and for the longest time, I knew I was forgiven, but never took the time to learn how to forgive. Pain is fleeting. Inflicting its affliction during a chance meeting of emotion, reaction, and circumstance slightly slows the beating of speeding hearts for a few wish they were more forgettable moments. But the resilience of the human spirit is on it, constructed with an ample dose of move onness. Yes. Hurt, however, has a tendency to take up residence. Find the deepest corner of the heart and mind to slowly take precedence of emotion, reaction, and circumstance. You see, pain is something you have. Hurt is something you are. And adding even more fuel to the flame, hurt has a face and a name. Wish they were more forgettable images displaying on the walls of the heart and mind over and over of the wrongs performed against what was mine. You see, hurt is a dangerous little thing. It wears a mask of anger and simultaneously one of shame. It is the fuel behind the actions we can't ascertain, the reason for the bad decisions we can't explain, the whistleblower. At the beginning of all the games, it will dwindle a grown man's perspective into that of a child. Reduce a wife and mother to the mindset of when she was five, much like a spirit, hurt only needs one thing to survive. A host, somewhere to hide. Something to feed off of to ensure it thrives. 
Now how would I know about forgiveness and how to apply unless I had stared unforgiveness square in the eye? I made excuses for my ease of detachment. Said stuff like, I don't want to keep anybody around that don't want to stay. If they want to leave, I'll show them the way. Walls. Constructed in an attempt to protect me from being hit again. It seemed like I got burned every time I let anyone in. And you can only be hurt so many times and abandoned by kin and friends before you toughen up and develop thick skin. But are we tough enough to look within and not allow a protected heart to let bitterness sink in? It is a battle to accept apologies, then grin. But it is warfare not to receive them and then forgive as if the offending party isn't fully aware of what they did and the very least they could do is make an attempt to make amends there's a reason that few tears fell from my face when i saw him at his end the obituary spoke highly of his life but failed to shed light on what he kept down didn't perhaps i was fixated on his absence had trouble wrapping my mind around how he could ignore the attachment. My eyes, rich skin tone and smile all match his. Now I'm a grown woman trying to retrieve the pieces so forgiveness can begin patching. At first it was latching onto the false hope that the hurt would disappear like magic, but no sleight of hand or illusion can match the turnaround and help in the action of asking. Fact is, holding a grudge is like letting someone live rent free in your head. But if Jesus paid it all and canceled my debt, cashed the check that Adam wrote and offered new life in its stead, and I profess to be coupled with the carrier of the cross and a pursuant of the perfect purpose of the cost, I'll count the loss. For therein is gain. The release of these grudges brings cease to these refrains, the repetition of positions of hopelessness and abandonment, being a consistent victim and coupling our personalities with the negatives life has handed us. When Jesus went to the cross, he had our grudges in hand with him, bore our sores upon his back to carry to the grave and banish them. When the stone was rolled away, the Messiah had strolled away, but if Mary had ventured deeper into the tomb alongside our sin, she would have seen our hurt thrown away, not because it has no worth, but because his love loves the hurt away. And so today, we have a choice to be content with being okay or to live a life fulfilled with joy to walk in Christ's example as we have our whole lives to live through remembering that our own new life started with I forgive as defined by Merriam-Webster's dictionary, is all things that exist. Our Father is everything to us. As you may know, the song by Ty Tribbett that I was just really trying to sing, it says he's everything. He's everything to us. He goes on in the lyrics to say, you're my peace, you're my deliverer, you're my redeemer, you're my provider, you're my father, you're my savior, you are Jesus. I want to encourage you today, whatever you may be going through, whatever situation may arise in your life, if there's a circumstance, if there's a relationship that's not going well, know that your father, Jesus Christ, is everything. He is your peace. He is your chief cornerstone. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the alpha. He is the omega. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. He is everything to you. He's told us that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us emotionally or physically. He is all that you need him to be. 
So I encourage you today, friends, anything that you're going to, find that place in the Word that speaks exactly to your situation. Do you need a friend? He says he's a friend. Do you need a lover of your soul? He says he's the lover of your soul. Do you need a brother? He is your brother. Do you need someone who will never leave? He said, I will never leave. So whatever it is you need to know today, please know that everything you can think of, you can pray to everything about it. God bless you. My name is Karen Gone. Be well.